In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use the Monarch API settings to automatically grab the follower counts from certain social networks that support API integration. Now we're talking about social follow, not social sharing, so I'm in the network section of the social follow area, and I'm going to add a couple networks to show you what I'm talking about. So I've added Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And you'll notice that there's some settings here. You can input your URL to your profile, and you can input the follower count. So if you, um, in, our, in our particular case, we have 35,000 Facebook followers, 19,500 Twitter followers, and 1,500 uh, Google Plus followers. So you would have to input your counts manually there, and those would be used um, on the front end to display uh, your count. And you have to come in and update those as you gain more followers um, to show off how many more followers you have. Now, Monarch comes with a setting called Git, via count, Git Counts via API, and if you enable this, then certain networks that support API integration um, will show some additional settings. You know, get the green check mark here um, next to those networks, which is telling you that there's no need to input the manual count here. We can actually get that count automatically and update it um, all the time and keep that count updated. So if you have Git Counts via API enabled, and you see that green check mark, that's what that means. And for those particular networks, they're going to come with some additional settings. As you see here, there's a, there's a username setting for Facebook. And down here, there's some API settings for a few other networks, which show up when you enable counts uh, via API. So I'm going to go over each of the different networks that support API integration and show you how each of them work. So at this time, we have the following networks um, supporting API integration. Um, this is not our choice, it's their choice, so as long, they have to supply us with an API, and once they do, we can integrate it. So these are the networks that have done that for us. So I'm going to go through each of these and, and show you how they work, and um, as new networks um, you know, enable API integrations, we'll add those as well, and uh, when that happens, we'll, we'll have additional, additional information um, in the tutorial uh, area below about how to use those networks as well. So we're going to start off with Facebook. You'll notice here that Facebook has a new field here called name, in addition to the standard fields of URL and network name. This is the name of your Facebook follower page. You simply need to input the name, and that's all that's required for Facebook. Um, then we can grab the API count, or yeah, the count via API. So for example, <clears throat> on Elegant Themes, our name is just Elegant Themes, no spaces. And you can figure out your name by looking at the URL of your page. So looking up here, Facebook.com slash Elegant Themes, that's our page name. I would just copy and paste that into the field, and we're all done. Now, not all pages, um, if you have a new Facebook page, you might not actually have an official page name yet. You might have a number assigned to your page. That's because Facebook um, doesn't let you claim a name early on. And so, for example, if you see this page, you look at um, their URL, there's actually a number at the end, and that is the uh, page name that we that would use for these API settings in that case. So you want to look at your URL and either copy the number or the um, page name, whatever is available. So in this case, we'd copy and paste that number in here instead and save, <clears throat> and we'd be all done. So that's how you use Facebook. Next up, we're going to show you how to use Instagram. Now, Instagram works a little bit differently. If you notice, there's no additional fields up here. That's because the settings are down here under the API settings, which is where all the um, o authentication settings, which is a particular authentication protocol, we have house all those settings down here. So various networks support um, o authentication, and Instagram is one of them. So before we can get the counts, we first have to register your website as an application with Instagram, and you can do that by logging into Instagram and then going going to Instagram.com/slash/developer/slash clients slash manage. And this, all this information is down, uh, down the page below, so you can look there. And so here, I'm going to type in that URL, and it's going to bring me to this, to this page. And you're going to want to click the register a new client button. And it's going to bring you, it's going to give you some fields that you have to, to fill in. So the application name, just give it a name that you can remember. And whatever description you like. Here you're going to want to input your URL. So I'm on localhost, so I'm just going to input uh, localhost. And then you're going to want to input what's called the OAuth redirect URI. And this is the URI, the URL that 
Instagram uses to communicate to the Monarch plugin, and then uh, they, they can communicate back and forth. So what you want to input here for the, redir the uh, redirect URI is actually the URL right here in the browser tab for the networks area. So if you're, if you're um, just starting from the beginning here, and you're in your dashboard, and you go, you go to Tools, Monarch Settings, and then click Social Follow. Um, that's the URL you want to use. You want to navigate to that area. You want to navigate to the Manage Networks area under Social Follow, and then just copy and paste the URL you see here in your browser. That's the URL, that um, the communication URL we're going to be using. So copy and paste that into the field there. And then scroll down, insert the CAPTCHA, and register the app. OK, so you've now registered your website with Instagram. And it's going to supply you with um, two unique uh, numbers. One's the client ID, and one's the client secret. And you're going to want to copy and paste both of these down here. Client ID, client secret, and then click Authorize. And it's going to bring you to a new page. You're just going to, again, uh, confirm that you want to authorize. And that's it. You're all done. You've now <clears throat> authorized Instagram. You've synced the accounts. And now it's going to be able to grab the, those uh, follower accounts automatically. You never have to touch um, the follower account again. OK, so that's how Instagram works. Now we're going to move on to uh, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn works much like Instagram. You're going to have to log into LinkedIn.com and um, authenticate your website as an app with their service. So log into LinkedIn and then go to LinkedIn.com slash secure slash developer. And once you reach that page, you're going you're gonna to see an add new application button. So you can log in and you'll see this, this page. Click the add new application. And then you're going to want to fill in all these details. So first up, your company name. Next, application name. You can just name it Monarch and whatever description you want to give it. Your website URL, so whatever your home page is. I'm just using localhost, but yours would be whatever, you know, domain.com. Application use, you know, whatever you happen to be using it for. Um, that doesn't really matter. Next is the um, status. You want to set it to live to make it go live. Um, put in your contact information, um, phone number. Next up is the the scope. So this is important. You only want to have the the basic the R underscore basic profile selected, because this is the the most limited version, and it means that your website has very limited access to your LinkedIn account. All it can really do is access the information. It can't delete things or send messages or do weird stuff with your account. So it just, it's just the most secure method is to, to limit the scope, because we really don't need uh, to, to, to uh, do that much. So just keep that selected. That's the default. And then we're going to need to impart, input the um, redirect URL, just like we did with Instagram. So go back <clears throat> to the dashboard and go to the Networks tab under Social Follow. Copy that URL from the address bar and uh, paste it in. The only difference is for LinkedIn, they don't allow um, number signs in the URL, so we're actually going to delete this. This everything after the pound sign, delete that. So it's going to look like yourwebsite.com slash wpadmin slash tools.php question mark page equals et underscore monarch underscore options. So that's what you want, you want to put. You want to delete um, the, the ID after that. All right, so take that same URL, paste it into the redirect URL, and then move down. And click Agree. Add application. And then it's going to give you a success page with all the information you need to fill in into um, in your Monarch settings dashboard. So you're going to copy the API key and the secret key. So copy and paste the API key down here where it says API key. And copy the secret key down where it says secret key. And then click the Authorize button. That'll bring you to a new page. You want to confirm um, and uh, click the Allow Access. And then you're all done. Your account's been linked up. OK, so that's how LinkedIn works. And next up, I'm going to show you how to use Dribbble. 
Now, Dribble works a little bit differently. You don't have to go through the same steps that we've done with um, Instagram and LinkedIn. Instead, you're going to need to log into your account, create an app there, and just get the access token. So, log into your dribble.com account, and then go to dribble.com slash account slash applications. Click the register a new application button, and then fill in this, the uh, fields here. Put, add a name and a description. And then for your website URL and callback URL, you're just going to put in your main domain name. For example, if I was using on elegantthemes.com, then I would just put elegantthemes.com here, click accept, and then register the application. You're going to get three um, pieces of information here. You're going to want to copy and paste the client access token. It's the third thing. And then paste it into the field here and save, and then you're all done. And um, Monarch will now grab your Drupal follower account and display it within the follower widget and the follower shortcode. OK, so that's how Dribble works. Next up, we're going to talk about Vimeo. So you'll notice Vimeo doesn't have any additional settings here. That's because the API settings are down here with the rest of the authentication uh, networks. So here you can see Vimeo. We need to get the client ID and client secret, just like we did with Instagram. So you're going to go to vimeo.com and log in, and then go to developer.vimeo.com slash apps. So type in that URL, and then you're going to click the Create a New App button on the right. And we're going to fill in um, a bunch of information just like you did with Instagram. So the app name, you can call it whatever you lark, like, <clears throat> Monarch Test. Description goes here. The app URL, this is just your main home page. So I'm doing localhost, I'll put in localhost. And then the callback URL, like we've done in the past, you're going to copy the URL from the Networks tab within the Monarch dashboard and paste that here into the callback URL. Click Agree, <clears throat> and then Create the app. All right, once the app has been created, click on the Authentication tab to get all the information we need, the um, client ID and the client secret. Now before I move on, I also want to mention that down here Vimeo does allow you to generate new access tokens and use different scopes. And as I mentioned in the past, we want to limit the scope as much as possible because um, there's no reason to give your uh, website access um, to do things like delete and edit, edit information. All we want to do is grab that follower account and that's it. So just be sure if you ever generate a new access token, just keep public and private checked and keep the rest of these unchecked. OK. So copy your client ID, paste it in the client ID field, copy and paste the client secret, and put it in the client secret field, and then click the Authorize button. That will bring you to a Vimeo authorization page. You're going to select Allow, and then that's it. You're all done. Vimeo is, Vimeo is now linked, and we can grab those counts automatically. OK, that's how Vimeo works. Next up, we're going to talk about SoundCloud. Now you'll notice that SoundCloud has some additional options here. We need to get a name and a client ID. So SoundCloud doesn't use the um, API settings down here. That's just for LinkedIn, Instagram, and Vimeo. We need to log into the SoundCloud account, create an app there, and get the name and client ID. So log into your SoundCloud account, and then go to soundcloud.com slash u slash apps, A-P-P-S. That'll bring you to this, this page where you can register a new application by clicking the register a new application button. You want to give your app a name. And then fill in these fields like you've done in the past. So input your main domain name. I'm just using localhost, but yours would be domainname.com, whatever your domain name is. And then for the redirect um, URL, so actually in this case, you'd use um, your full domain name. So it would be, um, in our case, if I was using this for elegantthemes.com, you'd put in elegantthemes.com. And for the redirect URI, you want to copy and paste this URL again. So go back to your Monarch settings, go to social follow, click on the networks tab, and copy and paste um, the URL from your uh, networks. Uh, Networks tab and place it <clears throat> in the 
into the SoundCloud redirect URL and click yes to accept the terms and save the app. So once your application has been saved, you can then use the client ID and the client secret. So here, I'm going to put in, it's hard to actually read it here, but that's asking for the client ID. So you want to put that in there. And then for name, your SoundCloud username, and um, whatever that may be. And then you're all done. So SoundCloud is now linked up. So that's how SoundCloud works. And next up, we have GitHub and VK. Now GitHub is pretty simple. I don't need to go into too much detail there. All you have to do is input your GitHub username, whatever that happens to be, and then that's all that's required. You're all done. For VK, you need to get your user ID, which is different than your username or what you use to log in. So you want to log into vk.com and go to vk.com slash settings, scroll down and find your profile ID. So that's mine for my test account. And input that here. And then you're all done. Once you save, VK will be connected and we can grab those counts automatically. All right, so there's a basic overview of all the different API settings. Um, this is a great way to um, save yourself a lot of time in uh, updating these counts. And so be sure to use these API settings. They're great.